And you know, the ACC regular season title on the line. Coach K not happy. Carolina's offense in transition looking very good. After Kyle Singler hits this jumper, as soon as the ball goes through the basket, here we go, Doug. Well, Nolan Smith, you have to be back. Seth Curry, you have to be back. When you're playing North Carolina, the first thing and maybe the only thing you have to concentrate on is transition offense. Roy Williams is the best coach in the country at teaching transition, not just off a of miss, but also off a of make. That was Dexter Strickland going in, and then Kendall Marshall always in control. Well, something else that you notice, every time they're able to beat people in transition, it's because Duke is backpedaling. If anything, if you're on defense, you want to hedge at that offensive player, make him change angles. Carolina with 51 first half points, and then Nolan Smith, he goes off glass. Now, Duke in this second half, they go on a run. They score the first seven points. Seth Curry, he had 20. Singler, uh, he saw the bucket right here. Well, it was one of the few times Kyle Singler did see the basket. And I think tonight what we saw, we saw Duke kind of turning into a one-man team. It turned into the Nolan Smith show. Marshall with a sweet look to Tyler Zeller. And then Harrison Barnes, he would miss, but Harrison Barnes on the follow. Well, Harrison Barnes has clearly matured during his freshman season. 18 points. You see much more energy, much more enthusiasm. And then you see Duke kind of disheveled, Jay, as they were trying to find each other, playing off Nolan Smith. They start forcing things. Now, all of a sudden, they have to come out and cover. And we know Seth Curry cannot cover out in the floor one-on-one. -on -one. Does not have the foot speed laterally to really guard the likes of a Dexter Strickland. 81-67 Carolina. They celebrate rushing the floor. Uh, just like Saturday, Duke struggled from three, and, and it cost them once again. In their four losses, you see they cannot find the bucket from behind the arc. And in this game, well, they struggled. Six of 27. And, of course, it results into a loss. L let's go to one of the big stars for Duke, Jay, in this game. Uh, Kyle Singler, 3 of 14, 8 points. Why did he struggle so much in this one? Well, I think Kyle Singler really has a difficult time going against the length of a guy like Harrison Barnes or John Henson. And you saw it a couple of times. Kyle Singler is the kind of player that is able to get by you a little bit with the dribble drive situation. But once he gets by you, he doesn't really know how to get his shot off effectively against the length of a Harrison Barnes or a John Henson. In the first game, really struggled. Three of 17 from the field, only 10 points. And also, guys like Seth Curry, they scored the basketball, but nobody else for Duke besides Seth Curry and Nolan Smith were able to score. And that's a key what Coach K talked about. UNC had balanced scoring. Duke did not. Different story the last six weeks with North Carolina. Kendall Marshall, after they lose the Georgia Tech, Kendall Marshall comes in. Now, they're 12 and 1 since he joined this team as the starting point guard. Why does he handle this team with such control? Well, he changes them because he's the best advanced passer in college basketball. By that, I mean when he gets the basketball, his eyes are always looking up the floor. And what that does is they, they have Tyler Zeller, who's the best running big man at seven feet tall in college basketball. So now all of a sudden, the ball goes to the net, and you're sprinting back because you got to worry about him. Then you have to worry about coming out on the wing and covering Harrison Barnes. And then while you're backpedaling, here comes Kendall Marshall trying to drive the basketball. If he doesn't throw it ahead right down your throat, he can finish or he can kick off for an open jump shot. I, I thought the initial flaw in the attack for Duke was the fact that they didn't have a plan for how to get out of the transition game. They let Carolina be Carolina, much like the first game when they got in trouble. And once Carolina got it going, he was right. It was like an avalanche, and it was just coming and coming, and they had to resort to chucking threes. Big picture now. Let's start with Duke. This loss, are they still a number one seed in your mind? I don't think they're number one seed now, but if they were to win the ACC tournament and some other things were to go wrong, um, I think for the likes of other teams, I still think if they were to win the ACC tournament and then a team like Notre Dame were to play Pitt in the finals of the Big East, I would still give my number one seed to Notre Dame over Duke at that time because of this loss to North Carolina. I don't see how they can be. I don't see where the wins are. They tried to schedule some difficult teams out of conference, and St. John's ends up being their most difficult out of conference game. They get blown out. I just I don't see the the top level top 25 RPI wins on their resume that they can accrue between now and the end of the season to where they can be a one seed or as Notre Dame and the Texas's of the world even the Purdue's of the world have a better uh, have a better level of top level wins even if they were at home as compared to a Duke whose best win of the year of course is Carolina at home. Now all three if all three of those teams go out early in their conference tournaments then if, the AC, if Duke was able to win the ACC you could see how they could potentially get number one seed. Now, real, real quick what does this do with Carolina in your mind when you're talking about seeding? I've already said it. I thought Carolina is a dark horse final four team. 
I mean, this team has a talent with down low on the post, and if they knock, knock down three-point shots, like they shot 44% in today's game, they're a heck of a basketball You're team. You're shaking your head. We, no, no, we, we've, oh, we've yeah. agreed on this for a while, okay? Big East, best conference, but don't let that take you away from the fact that Carolina has very good players. They're playing the best basketball of the year. Now they've won the ACC. They got some pros. They got a coach who's won a national championship two times over. He's also a Hall of Famer. Pretty good.